Did you know that the Resurrection Center has wonderful pastors? Well, it's true. They are Pastor Jose Martinez and his wife, Pastor Melly Martinez. We give thanks and blessings for their love and encouragement, and that is our topic today, encouragement. Blessings, everyone. My name is David Ewan, and I head up the Bravehearted Ministries at the Resurrection Center located in the Indian Orchard area of Springfield, Massachusetts. We live in uncertain times, and it is in these times we need encouragement that can only come from the Word, from the Bible, because people on TV are presenting confusion, controversy, debate, and a sense of loss. The times we live in are forcing people to think that the glass is half empty instead of half full. Our positive outlook has failed us. We have lost the sense that there is a positive outlook. We can no longer live like that if we are to continue as a society. God has provided the prin principles by which we are to live by. Unfortunately, it is easy for us to be forgetful of those principles. It is shameful that others who lead us find carnal humanistic ways to give understanding to uncertain times. The Bible has shown centuries after centuries that God has perfect understanding that he wants us to bestow upon us because we've been granted free will, we have chosen not to receive that understanding. Again, it's, uh, it's so shameful. The churches who are called by God are there to guide and enlighten us with the understanding that we intended to have. The design of Christianity is a perfect one. The Trinity shows Jesus connects the Holy Spirit within us to God. That communication gives us peace, comfort, and joy. God wants us to have a covering, favoring, and provision that only God can provide. He is an awesome God, and remember, God is good all the time. You see, God has given us gifts for us to live righteous and with success with our human carnal abilities. We forget these are gifts. As long as we follow the light through the darkness, God will show us the way to freedom. That freedom is the escape from fear, anxiety, despair, nervousness, and a feeling of being lost. Let's look at some tips. These are simple tips. But first, let's be guided by scripture for understanding. And wherever you are, please rise as I read the word as we are giving reverence to the Lord. So I am going to read from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Again, that's Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. And the scripture reads, But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up the wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall not walk and not faint. So now, here are some basic steps to get back on track on the path toward self-encouragement with the help of God and the Holy Spirit. So number one, start simple. Keep motivators around your work area, things that give you that initial spark to get you going. Whatever that may be, whatever gives you that happiness, whatever gives you that encouragement, let that be surrounded by you. Do more of what works and less of what doesn't work. If something doesn't motivate you, remove it. If something does motivate you, make it happen. So here's a thought about starting simple. Those who track it, hack it. This is what I mean by that. When you track an activity, you can objectively tell what you did in the past days, weeks, and months, or even years. If you don't track, you'll forget everything you did. So if you track it, you will see the trending of your motivation. Number two, keep good company. Make more regular encounters with positive and motivated people. This could be as simple as chats online, with peers or through your cell phone or a quick discussion with a friend who likes sharing ideas. Positive and motivated people are very different from the negative ones. They will help you grow and see opportunities during tough times. You'll be able to get encouraged by that good company. Number three, 
keep learning. Read and try to take in everything you can that is of po positive edification, one that is Christian, one that is given by God, certainly the, the word. Uh, there are other um, Christian foundation content that you can take advantage of. The more you learn, the more confident you become in starting projects. You can train your brain to crave lifelong learning. Number four, see the good in bad. And this means seeing the glass half empty instead of the glass half, uh, seeing the glass half full, I should say, instead of the negative, which is see the glass half empty. So what I'm talking about here is when encountering obstacles or challenging goals, you want to be in the habit of finding what works to get over them, okay? Every bad thing that happens is temporary. Every bad thing that happens has a solution. How do you know that? You've already experienced it in your life. You can do it again. Number five, stop thinking. Just do. If you find motivation for a particular project lacking, try getting started on something else, something trivial even. Then you'll develop the momentum to begin the more important stuff. When you're thinking and worrying about too much, you're just wasting time. So just make sure that you're making a positive step forward. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. What's important is it's forward. Do not think about that which may distract you. Number six, know yourself. Keep notes when your motivation is not good and when your motivation is very good. There will be a pattern that once you are aware of, you can work around and develop, okay? This is part of what we talked about before, keeping track of your activity in some form or fashion so that you can do more of what works and less of what does not work. Number seven, I said it before, track your practice, keep a tally uh, or some sort of progress bar for ongoing projects or goals that you have. When you see something growing, you will always want to nurture it. It's just like when you were in elementary school and they taught you uh, in biology how to water a plant and see the plant grow. This is the same thing you're doing as an adult. Track your progress and watch yourself grow. The next one, number eight, help others. Share your ideas and help friends get motivated. Seeing others do well will motivate you to do the same. Write about your success and get feedback from others. Helping others actually helps yourself. I'll say that again. Helping others actually helps yourself. What I would hope happens here is that you will gradually develop certain skills that become motivational habits. Once you get to the stage where you are regularly helping others keep motivated, be it with a blog or talking to peers or whatever it may be, you'll find the cycle continuing where each facet of staying motivated is refined and developed. So by helping others is really helping yourself. So now remember to stay on track and don't get lost. I'm going to read another scripture and this scripture is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. At the Resurrection Center, we meet twice per week, Wednesday at 7 p.m. and Sundays at noon. Check us out on social media. You can go to TRC413, again, TRC413, and you can subscribe to us on YouTube, Res Cent Spring, R-E-S-C-E-N-T-S-P-R-I-N-G, Res Cent Spring. And of course, you can always find the Bravehearted on KTV. 
from the Braveheart and Ministries. My name is David Ewan and this is the Resurrection Center.